My name is Juliana and I am 22 years old. I was born in Colombia, but raised in Miami, Florida. And I'm so honored to be here today with you guys, even if it's virtually, but thank you all for coming. Um, I'm gonna sh be sharing my story. So I grew up thankfully in a small neighborhood where everyone knew everyone. I had the same group of friends since elementary up until high school. And it was a very close family thing. I had always a good support system growing up. I have a sister who is my best friend. Everything I went through definitely made us closer. And um, I had a very good childhood. Uh, most would call me a perfectionist. I always, you know, I cared a lot about school since a young age. Straight A student, never let anything slide, very responsible. And in 2014, when I was 14 years old, just starting high school, it was around August. And I had just come back from a very exciting trip with my family. I was very excited to start the new year. Um, but during my first week of high school, I, I began feeling extremely overwhelmed, more than I ever had before starting a new year. I was super nervous, very anxious. I, I felt like my head was very foggy, but I kept telling myself that it was just the nerves of starting a new school year. A lot of my friends were asking my sister if I was okay. They said I was acting odd. I wasn't really myself. I was responding to their messages very strangely, but I kept telling myself that I was fine. And then I had some, I had some summer reading tests that came up and I actually failed them. So that was huge for me because I was so on top of school and I had read the books. So again, I was just like, maybe I'm starting off the year wrong. There has to be a fix. The second week of high school around August 22nd, 2014 is the day where everything took a turn for me. Um, a huge red flag was that after school, I used to always go home with my sister and her friends. We knew where to meet, what time to meet. I never missed a phone call. But that afternoon, I decided not to go with them. I didn't show up. I didn't answer any phone calls. And my mom had to come drive from work just to pick me up and take me home. I got home that day. Everyone was so furious at me. No one understood what was going on. So my mom sat me down at the dining table. And from what she's told me is I sat down and I had a spoon in my hand. I was trying to eat, but I started tapping the table nonstop. Like I had a tick and then I began to look up at the ceiling. I couldn't form a complete sentence. I wasn't there. My mom explained it like my physical body was there, but mentally I was not. And next thing you know, um, my body went numb my eyes rolled back and I was waking up in an ambulance on my way to Jackson Hospital. When I arrived at the hospital, you know, the doctors, which they usually do, once all the tests were negative, they told my mom, this might be psychological, you know, go home. And if anything ever happens again, you call us, you go see a psychologist. And thankfully my mom that day, she was so on top of it. She trusted her instinct. And she trusted that gut of hers. And she told them, I'm not leaving until I know what is wrong with her because this is not normal. You know, I know my daughter and I know she's not okay. They put me in a room. They said, we'll do, we'll try more testing. We'll do some, an MRI and EEG. And then thankfully, after about a week or so, they did the spinal tap, which is when I tested positive for anti-NMDA encephalitis. This came as a shock to my entire family as we had no idea what this illness was. Not a lot of people knew about it. It was so rare at the time. It still is. And, you know, I kept getting worse. My body was attacking my brain at such a fast rate. They had to put me in the ICU. We tried different treatments. We tried plasma exchange, IVIG, heavy doses of steroids. I was put on a feeding tube. And I do not remember the three months of my life after that day in the ambulance. The three months were the longest months ever. Next thing, I, you know, I was in the hospital. There were times where I had a really bad hallucinations. I felt like I needed to escape. I would try to run away. 
and my 90 pound self at the time had to be held down by about five nurses because somehow I had so much power, so much energy. And I, I was just trying to run away all the time. You know, no one, no one understood the degrees to this illness because every day was something new. Thankfully, after about two months to three months, I was able to leave the hospital um, with the agreement that a nurse would help my mom out mornings, nights for a couple weeks. We went home and it was definitely a very, very hard, long journey to recovery. I was still in and out of consciousness. I didn't know what had happened to me. I didn't know what day it was. I was still very aggressive. You know, I couldn't control my emotions. Your brain's all over the place. So um, my mom, thankfully, she's a physical therapist. She helped me out so much. Uh, I had to go to speech therapy, occupational therapy, see my neurologist. And luckily, I pushed so hard to go back to school. I was able to finish that year to my surprise. February 2015, I went back to school only six months after my diagnosis. I finished the year, but later that year when I was starting my second year of high school, I stopped all my medications and I hit a very low point in my life. I didn't want to go to school anymore. I wasn't showing up to class. I didn't want to leave my house. I lost connection with my friends and my family. You know, my family began to think that I was relapsing. It was very scary. They started taking me back to my neurologist, then my psychiatrist. They gave me a little more treatment, but um, turns out that I was really just going through that depression. You know, no one really knew about it, but I was still during my healing point of everything I had gone through. It was just all hitting me at once. So after that, after nothing had worked for me, I didn't want to take more medication. They told me that I could go see a neuropsychologist. So I agreed to that, even though I, feel, I felt at this point that nothing was going to help me. I had lost the will to keep going. I started seeing a neuropsychologist here in Jackson for a couple months. I would go twice a week. And my life, you know, it completely took a turn for the better. This was the only thing that helped me. And the only thing that showed me that I should stop asking myself, why me? It was more like, why not me? This helped me accept what had happened to me. It helped me, you know, use my emotions the right way. And I was able to finally find a purpose for myself. I felt like this was an awakening. What had happened to me, I wanted to use it, you know, in my advantage and just be able to help anyone I could help. I felt so strong after accepting everything that happened to me that I decided to go to the university where I just graduated from the University of Florida. Luckily, um, I chose to study neuroscience and psychology. Because of what happened to me, I got just this, this push, this drive to be, you know, to research the brain, to understand more of what this illness means and what's happened to us. And, you know, finally, I found my purpose and I just graduated this June. I recently started a job as a research associate in the University of Miami, helping research in neuropsych. And it has brought me so much joy in my life just because I feel like after going through something like that, you understand what you're capable of more than anyone else. And you understand the flexibility of the brain. You know, you can be at zero and then, you know, you can be back to yourself in no time or sometimes it takes a long time. Everyone's different. And I think it is the beautiful thing of life and about the brain. It's just it's so mysterious in so many interesting ways. So if anyone can take something out of my story is that it's okay not to be okay. I feel I wrote an essay for college called A Tragedy Worth Living because that's kind of how I see what I went through. I feel like it's something that was so hard and I bet it's so hard for everyone that's gone through something similar, but with the right mindset, the right support system, no matter where you are in your life or how lost you are, you can accomplish anything. You can find that inner strength and bring it forward when you most need it. 
And I feel like anything is possible when you really, really give it your all. I am so happy to be an information volunteer for the Encephalitis Society. It has brought so much joy into my life and I love that I can give back to people the way everyone gave me during the time of what I went through. And I'm so, so grateful to be here today. Sharing my story has always been a dream of mine. So thank you guys so much for being here with me. I can't wait to be here.